There are many functions in Final Cut Pro 10 that you should learn if you want to improve your editing skills, but you still need to start with the basics. Even putting items into the timeline can be confusing if you're not sure what you're doing. So here are the editing basics in Final Cut Pro 10. Editing can actually start in the browser window, where you choose the exact section of a clip or multiple clips to edit in the timeline. Select the item that you want to edit and drag the yellow outline from either end to the range you want to put in the timeline. Holding Option while dragging replaces the current selection, holding Command adds a range, and holding Shift changes the nearest in or out point for a selected range. To use in and out points instead, position the skimmer on your preferred frame and hit I to set the range's starting point and O for its ending point. To make multiple in and out points, press Shift, Command I or O. Pressing Option I or O removes them. To reset all your selections, hit X while the clip is selected. Now that you have them, it's time to put them onto the timeline, which you can do in a few ways. Media can be added to the timeline from the browser or directly from the Finder window. Using the Finder method will apply your default import settings, so be sure to know what they are. Either way, drag the media into the timeline. It will then be on the primary storyline, which is the dark gray bar in the middle of the timeline. Depending on where you drag it in relation to any other items, the clip may do one of several actions, which are connect, insert, append, or overwrite. A connected edit connects the clip to the primary storyline and is done with the letter Q. It will move with the primary storyline automatically and works great for cutaways, titles, sound effects, and background music that needs to be at a specific spot in regards to the primary storyline. An insert edit will add the item to the primary or selected storyline and push everything after it later in the timeline, and it's performed with the letter W. Appending the clip with the letter E means that your item will be added to the end of the primary or selected storyline. This, along with insert edits, will make the duration of the storyline longer. Using an overwrite edit means your item will overwrite anything in the primary or selected storyline. The overall length of the storyline will not change. Press the letter D to do an overwrite edit. All of these actions can be performed manually with the key commands, but they're also easy to perform using the buttons above the timeline and using standard three-point editing. The basic idea of three-point editing is that you use three edit points to add items to the timeline automatically. The three points can either be two in your timeline and one in your browser, or two in the browser and one in the timeline. Then, you use one of the previous edit types that best fits with what you want to do. Set the in and out points or select a range on one or more clips in the browser and position the playhead or skimmer where you want the media to go in the timeline. These three points now tell Final Cut where to send the media from the browser. If your two points are in the timeline instead of the browser, then the clip from the browser will fill that section regardless of how long the selected range is. To back time or backfill a clip into the timeline, meaning the end point of the clip lines up with the playhead or skimmer, hit Shift-Q for connected edits and Shift-D for override edits. To send multiple clips to the timeline, select two or more clips and perform the same actions as you would for a single clip. They'll be edited into the timeline in the order you selected them. You can also select multiple clips in the timeline and edit clips into their place. Now that your clip is on the timeline, you can start editing it even more. Trim it by clicking and dragging either inward or outward. Move the clip by clicking and dragging it left, right, up or down, but remember that anything that's connected to its storyline will move with it, and anything that's not will move around it. Turn on snapping to snap your clips to the end or beginning of adjacent items, both while trimming and moving items around. The blade tool cuts items at any frame that you choose, and you can also use the blade on multiple layers at once. The range selector is here for working with specific sections of the project. The zoom tool is great for getting in tight and performing detailed edits, or for seeing larger sections of your project. And the hand tool grabs and moves the timeline one way or the other, giving you a quick way to move around the timeline. Even though you may not use every one of these functions or operations in every project, learning these basics is the first step to becoming a better editor. It'll also help you step up your efficiency and be more creative in your projects. You can also enhance your creativity with the free Pond5 app for Final Cut Pro 10. 
access millions of items from the Pond5 Marketplace, add preview files directly to your Final Cut project, edit them, and replace them with the full resolution versions all with just a few clicks. The app even includes 50 free pre-selected media files for you to try in your projects. If you like this video and want to see more, check out our YouTube channel and subscribe for other tutorials. You can also read the Pond5 blog for an in-depth companion piece, as well as other filmmaking tips and tricks. And as always, head over to Pond5.com to get millions of video clips and other assets to use in your next project.